can't believe she just did that. She just up and left. And after all her belly aching about getting here in the first place. Applejack said incredulously. Please don't think badly of her. Fluttershy's stare remained fixed on the sky visible through the doors. Rainbow Dash is just upset and she... She doesn't deal with feeling helpless that very well. As the pony who had known her the longest, Fluttershy spoke with quiet conviction, no pony questioned. Applejack blew out a sigh. <sighs> We're all upset, Sugar Cube, but we don't all run off at the drop of a hat. Applejack paused. This is the point where Pinky would say that my hat didn't drop because it's still on my head. She muttered. She turned her face away. Dang it! How the hay did this get bad so gosh darn fast? She was fine yesterday, and maybe she wasn't 100% fine when we saw her today, but she wasn't... She trailed off. They were all asking themselves the same question. How far was Pinky's decline going to go? I... I don't want to go home. Spike piped up. Um, just saying. Even if we can't actually go up and see Pinky, I don't want to go home yet. Me neither. <clears throat> Rarity cleared a revealing croak from her throat and said more empathetically, If Pinky is here, I'm staying here. I'd like to stay too. Fluttershy added, But, um... I should probably go home and feed my animal friends first. As if some pony would question her loyalty, she gabbled. I mean, the thing is, I last fed them before lunchtime, and even though I fed them plenty, we went straight to the library after we left here, and I haven't been home since, so they'll probably be very hungry by now, and Mrs. Mouse recently had a litter of babies, so I should check on them too, not to mention I have to change the dressings on Miss Vixen's foot and... Um, I'm sorry. No need to apologize, Fluttershy, said Applejack. You want some pony to walk with you? Many hooves make light work and all. I'm pretty good at changing bandages on squirmy critters after Winona heard her paw last spring. Thank you, but I'm fine. You should... You should stay here in case. Fluttershy seemed unable to finish her sentence. She bit her lip. I'll be as quick as I can. If, if, if Pinky... If, if something happens... I'll come and fetch you. Twilight said, thinking of the teleportation spell she had used several times. Teleporting another pony with her left her nauseous and dizzy, but if anything bad had happened to Pinky, speed would supersede comfort. I promise. Thank you. Fluttershy said gratefully. I'll be back soon. <laughs> Cupcake nuzzled Pumpkin's stomach making the tiny foal giggle. Oh, I could just eat you up! Has there ever been a foal as cute as you? Had there ever, ever, ever? Right here, chuckled Carrot, cradling Pound. The young colt yawned. Oh, yes, so there is. Cup exclaimed in mock surprise. She applied talcum powder and finished putting Pumpkin in a fresh diaper. All done, no more stinky. Pumpkin burbled and chewed on her forehoof. Carrot pulled a face. Well, almost. He indicated to the scented plastic baggie containing the old diaper, which was not quite as good as keeping in bad odors as advertised. Cup had placed it on the side of the changing mat. Now it was steadily filling the room with its conflicting smells. Yes, I'll just get rid of that, shall I? She said wryly. Then we'll get going. It was lucky that their neighbors had agreed to babysit while they went to go visit Pinky in the hospital. Lyra wasn't the most reliable pony in the world, but Bonbon's nonsensical practical balanced out her partner's enthusiasm. Privately, Bonbon had confessed to Cup that they had someday hoped for a foal of their own, so she had been more than happy to agree when Carrot asked. Since there were two of them, and especially since Lyra was a unicorn with first hoof experience in growing up magical, the cakes felt assured that they would be able to cope with Pumpkin and Pound's corks. Carrot buckled Pound into the stroller, and Cupcake left him to do the same with Pumpkin, as she disposed of the diaper. She held it out from her, for lay locked so the baggie wouldn't touch her. She knew that it was unlikely to spontaneously burst open and cover her with her daughter's excrement, but she couldn't just help some superstitions. She loved her little ones with all her heart and soul, but even she had her limits. 
She was so focused on her task that she didn't see the black little lines wriggling across the ceiling. They jerked and jolted over her head, some concealed in recesses of shadow, some blatantly twitching past the light fixing. A few stragglers hurried to catch up as they crawled like convulsive caterpillars over the doorframe and into the twins' room. Cup gratefully plonked down the lid of the trash can and headed back inside. She climbed the stairs slowly, knowing she would be puffing and panting if she took them at speed. Carrot always said he loved her no matter what she looked like, and it was hard to say no when Pinky presented her with the mist cakes, as she called those too misshapen, burned, or just plain ugly to sell in the cafe. Nevertheless, sometimes she wished she had the energy to take up jogging or join an exercise class to get rid of the post-pregnancy pudge. At least most of it is post-pregnancy, she thought wryly. Okay, some of it is. A little bit, a very little bit. Putting the unwelcome thoughts of her expanding waistline from her mind, she called. Honey bun, are you all ready to go? Go? Carrot called back. Go where? To see Pinky, of course. Cup stepped through the door to find Carrot unstrapping Pound from the stroller. Pumpkin had gotten herself to her hind legs to thrust her stubby forelegs through the bars of her playpen at her mother. Carrot frowned at her in confusion. Pinky? Who's Pinky? What? Cupcake laughed, assuming he was joking. Carrot, don't be silly. I'm not being silly, Snookums. He continued to look genuinely puzzled. Carrot was a sweetie with a mind like a sieve and a heart of gold, but he couldn't keep secrets and was the worst liar in all of Equestria. Cupcake could see through any untruth like it was cellophane. She inhaled sharply and looked into his eyes. He wasn't lying. He really didn't know who she was talking about. Pinkie Pie, she said slowly, as if that might jog his memory. Our apprentice. She rents the room upstairs. She's lived with us for almost two years now. She's in the hospital, remember? I think you're the one being silly, honey bun. We never managed to rent the room upstairs, remember? We tried, but no pony wanted to live in a place where we start work at 5 a.m. He shook his head. And our apprentice sure isn't called Pinkie Pie. And she sure isn't in the hospital. She finished her shift and went home, remember? What? Panic loosed through her like ice water. But? In the playpen, Pumpkin's jabbering took on a fretful edge. Her little horn glowed like she was about to have another magical surge. Uh-oh. Carrot left Pound buckled in the stroller and hurried to pick up their daughter. Come here, you. Don't worry, Daddy's here. He picked her up and stroked her back like all she needed was to be winded. Instead of soothing Pumpkin, she only grew more agitated, reaching desperately for their mother. Or that was what Cup assumed, until she realized Pumpkin was not looking directly at her. She followed the foal's gaze, gasping when she saw the massive jittering black lines on the wall. She backed away, putting herself further into the room and closer to her family. Instinctively, her stance became protective, head lowered and hooves planted wide. Carrot, what are those things? Hmm? He started to turn. What? A few black lines scuttled from his mane and crawled through the air like worms through soil. They're on you! What are? Carrot looked at her and then at the wall where she pointed. He blinked, his sightline a steady, undistracted stare. Honey bun, are you okay? You're acting awfully strange. He can't see them? Pound began to cry, his little wings flapping as he tried to extricate himself from his seatbelt. The wriggling black lines were forming a pattern. Cup was about to shout for Carrot to run when she realized that she recognized the shapes some had formed. Cakes. She stared in mounting horror and bewilderment, as more squirmed into place beside their surname. The Cakes Apprentice. The words trembled as if alive. Alive with the wriggling, jiggling, squiggling little. Whatever those things were, another word formed. Is. Carrot! 
she said hoarsely. We have to run! On the far side of the wall, yet more of them came together. Very happily together. We have to take the fools and run! Now! She grabbed for Pound, panic making her fumble with the clasp on a safety belt. The lines were making a sentence, starting at either end and working their way inward. They were silent, but the words they made rang through her head like a knell. And they work? She yanked at Pound so roughly she nearly fell backwards. He cried harder in her grasp. Honey bun! Carrot exclaimed. What's gotten into you? Pumpkin burbled angrily, her tiny horn glowing like she was trying to protect her oblivious father. Is called... Carrot! Cup pulled at him and ran for the door. Follow me! Quick! Wait! (sighs) Too late. The last word formed, and with a noise like a happy sigh, the whole sentence stopped wriggling. The edges smoothed and the words became so easy to read as type on a printed page. The sentence peeled off the wall. For a single frozen moment, it hung in the air. Then it shot towards the running mare and wrapped around her in an explosion of black ink. Pumpkin screamed. Rainbow Dash soared through the air, so high that clouds brushed her belly, and the countryside rapidly passed below. She would be there in no time at this rate. The rock farm where Pinky had grown up was, as Pinky herself had always put it, only a stone's throw from Ponyville. In reality, it was more than that, but the distance posed no problem for the fastest Pegasus in Equestria. She swooped out of the cloud bank to get her bearings, realizing that she was traveling even further than she had thought. It was amazing what you could do when you were really motivated. The rock farm was just over the next rise. She crested it expectingly. The quarry wasn't there. Rainbow pulled up short. Huh? She circled the area, thinking she must have missed it or not gone far enough. She had been there only once before, and though it was unlikely, it was possible that she had gotten the location wrong. She hadn't. There was no quarry and definitely no rock farm anywhere around. Green fields stretched as far as the eye could see. Twilight's words came back to her. There is not, nor has there ever been, a rock farm belonging to a family named Pi. What in Celestia's name is going on here? Rainbow Dash asked the empty air. The sun was still up, but beginning to make its descent into dusk, casting long shadows across the land. She did another circuit, but came up with the same result. Fields of freshly harvested crops, but no rock farm. This makes no sense! How does a whole quarry just disappear into thin air? And what about Pinky's family? If their farm was gone without a trace, what about them? She espied the farmhouse at the edge of one of the fields and powered towards it. Maybe the ponies inside would know something. Keep your mane on! said a gruff voice as she pounded on the door. It opened to reveal an aging brown stallion in a black hat, with a pristine white band around it. She recognized him immediately. It was hard to forget some pony who made your friend cry. Mr. Pie! Rainbow Dash exclaimed. Hmm? He eyed her suspiciously. He was still chewing the stalk of grass as last time. Except it wasn't just grass. It was a grouty stalk of wheat. Can't you read the sign? He pointed to the little piece of cardboard pinned to the door. No hawkers, circulars, or sales ponies. I'm not selling anything. Don't you recognize me? They had only met once, but Rainbow Dash knew her mane and tail made her stand out in Pony's memories. Not a scrape of recognition shone on his face. Can't say that I do. I'm Pinkie Pie's friend. Who? She scowled. So it was back to this. Pinky had essentially been excommunicated by her family for choosing to leave the farm. Her father had called it shunning, which Pinky had explained meant she pretty much didn't exist to him anymore. Apparently having a party-themed cutie mark 
was tolerable up to a point, but choosing to live out the dreams it opened up was not. The whole thing made Rainbow Dash want to turn around and buck him, but that wouldn't get her the answer she wanted. Look, I know you like to pretend that you don't have a third daughter, but I'm here to tell you that she's real sick in the hospital and that you need to go see her because when I say real sick, I mean real sick and where the heck is your rock farm? She sucked in a much needed breath. Rock farm? Mr. Pie said. What kind of dumb idea is that? Who farms rocks? You do! Or you did! Something real screwy is going on here and- Hey! Hey Blinky! Rainbow Dash caught sight of Pinky's sister. Gratitude swept through her. Blinky was the only pony who had acknowledged Pinky during their last visit. She had chased after them and pushed a brown paper wrapped package into Pinky's hooves, which later turned out to be family photos their father had tried to throw away. Blinky, who had been crossing the hall, trotted over to the door. Yes? It's me, Rainbow Dash! At Blinky's bland look, she added, Pinky's friend? Blinky's expression could have not been emptier. It was as if someone had punctured her heart and let all the emotion seep away a long time ago, leaving her with no recourse but blank indifference. I'm sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about, miss. Sure you do! Rainbow Dash insisted angrily. You! She stopped. Her eye caught on the wall of framed photos behind the two Earth ponies. She recognized some. They were from the package Blinky had given Pinky. Now, instead of carefully glued into albums in Pinky's room above Sugar Cube Corner, they were displayed proudly on the wall here. Yet, it was not this that made the words die in Rainbow Dash's throat. Pinky was not in any of them. Even the ones Rainbow Dash recognized did not have her in them. Rainbow Dash knew where she would be, could even pinpoint the exact spot with her hoof, but there was no sign of the pink filly in any of them. Are you alright, miss? Blinky asked, as if it didn't matter to her one way or another. I... I... Rainbow Dash backed away. I gotta go! She ran down the path and launched herself into the sky, banging a sharp left towards Ponyville. This was too weird. She had to tell her friends, fast. Luckily, fast is what she did best. Red Heart pulled the food trolley down the little corridor to the isolation unit, opening the door at the opposite end open with her rump. It involved some complicated near acrobatics to hold it open with one hoof while she dragged the trolley through, swinging it into the room in the tiny arch before letting the door shut again. The breathing mask may have been necessary, but it sure made simple tasks more difficult when she couldn't grasp things in her mouth and use all four hooves for walking. Hi there, she said with a smile the mask concealed. Dinner time. Since you didn't get anything to eat earlier, I figured you must be pretty hungry by now. She raised her head. Pinky. A dome of restrictive magic shimmered over the bed. Since her back condition and possibility of seizures prevented Pinkie Pie from being restrained by normal means, the hospital had been forced to come up with an alternative. The effect, as Red Heart noted, was like a gigantic food protector over a single pink cupcake. Pinkie Pie? She pulled the trolley closer. Would you like something to eat? Pinky lay in front of her, face buried in the pillow. She lifted her head at Red Heart's approach, looking befuddled. She blinked and shook her head as if to clear it. Her left eye twitched. Oh, hi there. Deciding to remain cheerful in hopes it would, in turn, cheer Pinky, Red Heart presented the trolley. I have daisy sandwiches, daffodil and pasta salad, and some sweetened clover patties. If you're still hungry afterwards, there are lemon surprise muffins, red velvet cupcakes, or fruit. She smiled again, hoping it would reach her eyes. I'm sure hospital food can't compare with your home baking, but for what it is, it's not half bad. Pinky blinked at her. Do you have any dew soup? Dew soup? Red Heart had heard of it, though she had never tried it. Soup made of water of morning dew, 
was a specialty dish served almost exclusively in Cloudsdale and parts of Canterlot and Manhattan, typically areas populated by Pegasi. The soup had some qualities that made it appealing to a Pegasi palate, but tastes like boiled dishwater to all other ponies. Uh, no, I don't. Oh. Pinky lowered her chin to the pillow. I think I like dew soup. It might even be my favorite. You think you like it? I'm not sure. It's one of the hazy things. A lot of things the other me knows are becoming clearer now. But some are still hazy. She made a face. I wonder whether I'll ever know some of them. I think they got left behind. If you break two mirrors and mix up the pieces, you don't get to reflections. But the picture is still wrong. It's the same with jigsaws. Nothing fits exactly anymore. So you have to stomp on the pieces to make them fit when they don't want to. And the picture at the end is weird. She giggled. <laughs> stomp, stomp, stomp. Find a friend to glomp. A frown creased her brow. What is a glomp anyhow? Red Heart wasn't sure what to say to that. Then again, she often had no idea what Pinky was talking about. Uh, would you like a sandwich? She asked. Pinky's left ear flicked independent of the right. I can't. She indicated the shimmering dome. It's in case I climb on top of the cabinet again, which I won't, but they wanted to be extra specially, specially, specially sure because I might fall off and hurt myself because I can't... She stopped abruptly. I... can't... Her eyes became unfocused. <laughs> Though she tried, whatever she was trying to say would not come out. Instead, her body started to rock from side to side. She covered her head in her forelegs and moaned. She elongated the vowel so much it was nearly unrecognizable. A strangled scream burst from her. Oh no! Not again! However, this time, Redheart had come prepared. She grabbed the hypodermic from the lower shelf of the trolley, slipped the protective plastic from the needle, and made sure there was no air bubbles. Satisfied, she scrubbed a hoof through the circle on the floor that marked the limits of the magical barrier. From within, no pony could touch or affect it, but a single break in the line from this side would cease the magic's effect until some pony connected it up again with the charmed magnetic chalk. Though the circle had been drawn by a Medi mage, it had been specifically designed so that any hospital staff member, unicorn or not, could dissolve it in case of emergencies like this. Hold still, Pinky. Red Art said, keeping her voice calm and level. This will only pinch a little. She reached for one of the forelegs clamped over Pinky's head. Pinky arched her back into a fresh scream. She flung out her forelegs, knocking the hypodermic from Red Heart's grasp. Red Heart scrambled to pick it up as Pinky rocked upwards, head thrown back in a second agonizing scream. Pinky! Red Heart shouted over the noise. Pinky back! She was silent by a noise like tearing fabric. Thick black liquid splattered the wall as Pinky's back tore open. It was as if she was being flayed by an invisible whip. Her scream became a choking gasp as first one and then two splits appeared, shearing from the shoulder to the hip. Then something pushed through the flesh, twitching and writhing like maggots breaking free from a hollowed out corpse. She leaned forward, convulsing in time with her deep, ragged sobs. Finally, a wet rip, something unpeeled from beneath her coat and stood on end. First one, and then the second pushed free, flinging gouts of liquid into the air. Some landed on the ceiling, a dripping splotch of red and black. Some landed on Redheart, who stifled her own scream of revulsion and fell backwards as she tried to shake off a piece of skin covered in pink fur that had landed over her eye. Who? Code Red! ID Redheart! She shrieked. 
The security magic glowed, and the alarm started to wail. Pinky panted, hunched over on the bed. The things poking out of her back fluttered like they were testing the air after being trapped for so long inside of her. Rivlets of dark liquid ran over her sides and dripped onto the bedclothes. Redheart was frozen in shock as Pinky raised her head and turned to look at her. <sighs> I knew I should be able to fly. She panted. Knew it! Knew it! Knew it! <laughs> she giggled. It sounded wrong. Her face fell, and panic suffused her expression. She leaped off the bed, though she should have not been able to move with those injuries. Redheart scrambled away, but Pinky bounded over and cupped the nurse's face in her forehooves. If you try to push two things together, they both break! She said in a panic. She spoke using the same tones and inflections she had when Redheart had found her lying on her side. That's why you can't just smush whole worlds together. But doing it piecemeal doesn't work either. We can't both exist. It's not possible. But they want it. They want it. Want me to be me so much that they set it in motion and... And we're breaking. I'm breaking and... And... Her eyes became unfocused again. And they're right. Of course they are. It has to be all it should have been. Before the beginning. All of it. All of it! She dropped Redheart and ran for the window. Wait, no! Pinky crashed through the glass, but instead of plummeting, she opened her new wings and flew like she had been doing it for all of her life. Redheart hastened to the window. However, by the time she got there, Pinky was nowhere to be seen. Redheart turned when the door crashed open and a slew of ponies thundered in, demanding to know what had happened in a clamor of overlapping voices. The soaked ceiling walls and bed didn't tell even half of what had happened. But the truth was so far-fetched that Redheart's mind did as many do when faced with the truth so impossible to process. It snagged on a single insignificant thing, which she had noticed when she literally watched a pony's mind snap in front of her. Pinky's eyes had been bright purple. What happened, Redheart? Dr. Stable pushed his way through and turned her to face him. What in the name of Celestia happened here? Where is she? His eyes flicked to the broken window. Did she jump? I... I... Redheart stuttered. On the wall behind the gathering ponies, small black lines crawled silently into formation. <laughs>